Hello again. Today our topic is CPU scheduling algorithms. In the previous video, we discussed the first come first served scheduling algorithm. Today we are going to discuss shortest job first and shortest remaining time first scheduling. In shortest job first, processes which have the shortest burst time are scheduled first. If the burst time for two processes are equal, then the first come first serve is used. Shortage of first is a non primitive scheduling algorithm. Shortest remaining time first is a primitive mode of shortage of first algorithm. In shortest remaining time first, jobs are scheduled according to shortest remaining time. Consider the following set of processes with their arrival and CPU times. According to shortage of first scheduling, in the queue initially we have process one. After completing with the process one, in the queue we have processes two, three, and four. Process four has the minimum CPU burst, and after completing with it, process two is scheduled, and it needs four nanoseconds. And the last process in the queue process three with six nanoseconds. The average waiting time is computed as follows. Process one does not wait. Process two starts here, but we have to subtract the arrival time, which is four. Process three started at time 14, and the arrival time is three. And the process four, here eight minus its arrival time four over four which is eight plus eleven plus four over four is twenty three over four so the average waiting time is five point seven five milliseconds I will repeat the same example for the shortest remaining time first. At time zero, we have process one. After two time units, process two arrives and the CPU burst is four, which is less than the remaining time for process one. So after two milliseconds, process two would be scheduled. Process two needs four milliseconds. Although after one millisecond, process three arrives, and since it needs six milliseconds, so it does not preempt process two. And after two from here, milliseconds, process four arrives, and it needs two milliseconds. And the remaining time for process two is two, so we continue with the process two. After completing process two, in the queue we have process one, process three, process four. The process four is scheduled since it has the minimum CPU burst. It needs two milliseconds. And after completing it in the queue, we have processes one and three. According to first come, first served scheduling, we pick process one. After completing it, we can pick process three. Average waiting time is computed as follows. Process one does not wait here. And here it waits eight minus two. This is for the process one. Process two does not wait at all. Here, a process three here with 14 minus its arrival time, which is three, and the process four six minus its arrival time, which is four, and this is equals to six plus 11 plus two over four 
which is 4.75 millisecond. And this result is better than in the shortage of burst scheduling algorithm. In the shortage of burst, the average waiting time was 5.75 milliseconds. However, there is a cost for this improvement. In the shortest remaining time burst, we have a lot of context switching, which also takes time. Shortage of first scheduling algorithm is optimal in terms of average waiting time for a given set of processes. Average waiting time is minimum with this scheduling. Both shortage of first and shortest remaining time first algorithms may cause starvation. Consider a situation when the longer process in the ready queue and shorter processes keep coming. To successfully implement these algorithms, the burst time of the processes should be known to the processor in advance. How to know or predict the time required from the CPU for the next process? One way we can assume that the next CPU burst equals to the previous CPU burst, or it can be predicted using the exponential average of the previous CPU bursts. In this case, we need to record the previous CPU bursts and calculate the average for them. So in practice, shortest job first and shortest remaining time first are not used. They are mainly used for comparison and evaluation purposes. Our next topic is the priority CPU scheduling. For today, that's all. Thank you.